Uh, hi everyone, it's, I'm really thrilled to be here. I missed the, uh, the conference in 2018 and it's a big regret of mine, so I'm really pleased to be here with you all. Um, so today I'm just going to talk briefly, uh, give a kind of an introduction to O'Hara's curatorial practice and his curatorial career, uh, but focusing um, on one exhibition that he created in France um, in 1956. Um, this is part of a bigger book project, um, looking at his curatorial work, and particularly his work outside of New York. So we, of course, we often we're here at the New York School, um, thinking about how we historicise that and how we think about that geographically. Um, but this project looks at O'Hara um, abroad. So, when Frank O'Hara was killed um, in July 1966, the New York Times obituary ran with the headline, Frank O'Hara, 40, museum curator, exhibition aid at modern art dies, also a poet. In the half century since, his career as a curator has been eclipsed by the critical attention given over to his poetry. Um, and as I say, we we're talking about his work for the International Programme. So in 1955, the director of the International Programme, O'Hara's boss, someone called Porter McRae, was in Paris um, for the Salute to France exhibition, which is a major cultural festival sponsored by the United States Embassy in Paris and the French government. But also included ballet, opera, and theatre as a kind of diplomatic overture um, to kind of complement French culture. Um, and there was two elements of this: an exhibition of um, American um, uh, French paintings in American collections, and an exhibition called Fifty Years of American Art," um, which was um, then became the Modern Art in the USA traveling exhibition. So. McRae's in um, Paris and he persuades um, Dorothy Miller um, to select these works um, and to assemble an exhibition of around 70 watercolours um, by the younger generation of American painters for showing in Paris and other French cities um, during 1956. So Miller, who'd been gradually researching this project, um, would work closely with O'Hara and then O'Hara takes on um, the curator as he's the principal curator of the exhibition. Um, and this is the start of a creative partnership that becomes the New American Painting Exhibition, which, which has been mentioned earlier, um, that O'Hara um, is the assistant um, to Miller. Um, so there's some anxieties and some reservations about this particular show. Why, why should we be interested in watercolour in 1956? Um, and also there was a travelling exhibition by the Meltzer Gallery, which some at the moment believed was um, kind of, there was too much overlap. But O'Hara made a forceful case um, for this exhibition. And he argued that developments in gesturally abstract painting brought a new framework with which to contextualise the perceived traditionalism of the watercolour technique and, for a moment, give it a radical inflection. Um, so rather than a, turn, a nostalgic turn to a style of painting that appeared to be amateurish, famously the medium of such Sunday painters as Winston Churchill, advanced artists working in oil had turned to watercolour because it felt consistent with the compositional strategies and that had come to codify gestural abstraction. Um, and these included fierce and quick um, tempered brush strokes, much pigment to create blurred edge forms, and drawing attention to the medium specificity of the exposed surface. Um, and in his catalogue essay, O'Hara stressed correlations um, and thought more, uh, though less about individual style or compositional approach rather than um, universal form. So this is O'Hara in, um, um, in the essay. Those qualities which have distinguished watercolour in the past, qualities of brevity, wit, freshness, the intimacy of the occasional, have of late become preoccupations of works in oil, particularly among the artists in the United States, often referred, referred to by critics as action painters, abstract expressionists, or American type painters. And in turn, the contemporary American artists tend to bring a serious compositional intention to the watercolour and a formal intensity, which may seem far from the casual graces and felicitous renderings that we admire in certain watercolours of the past. Above all, he does not turn to the watercolour in a spirit of relaxation. So these qualities, brevity, wit, freshness, uh, the intimacy of the occasional, are obviously the qualities of his own poetics, as O'Hara makes a case for action over decoration at a time when these values had become cliched through their attachment to an American present and a French past. It might seem unclear, at least at the outset, if any real distinction can be established between what he means by qualities of brevity and the intimacy of the, of the occasional, um, that he recognises in the most advanced art of his age and what the casual graces quite mean of a former one. But the essay charts the course of the watercolour in modern American art and acknowledges that what he calls the 19th century vogue for charming watercolours um, uh, meant that few American artists seemed to realise how full an expression watercolour provided. So in O'Hara's you know, view, it was natural that the abstract expressionists would recognise the medium potential 
given its correspondence with the kinds of experiments in oil that they were doing at the time. According to O'Hara's prose chronology, this process began with John Marin and was now taken forward by a younger generation that included Nell Blaine and Joe Mitchell. Um, I'm just going to skip over this a little bit, but I wanted to show this. This is from the archive at MoMA, um, and this is part of O'Hara's research for the, um, for the biography of Mitchell, um, who was um, living in Paris at the time. Um, she participated with three new works, which were all untitled works on paper and all dated from 1956. Um, and this was really important, we can maybe talk about this later, but this was an important time in Mitchell's career. As, um, she moved to a much bigger apartment and started to scale up her works. Um, and it was in France that Mitchell painted semi-abstractly from nature, as O'Hara put it in, in, her, um, in his artist's biography. So I'm just going to skip over for a moment, but there's little doubt in many ways that the recent American watercolours lacked the ambition and scale that had attended the Salute to France exhibition that I mentioned in 1955, which was a lot of over overtures and appeals to French cultural sensibility. Um, but it was an important turning point in O'Hara's career. Um, so the exhibition didn't show in Paris in the end, um, but showed in Léon, Saint-Quentin, Rennes, Clermont-Ferrand and Nice. Um, and throughout the organisational correspondence, um, representatives of MoMA and the United States Information Agency, which co-sponsored it, talked of the, what they called the provincial quality um, of the exhibition for not showing in Paris. Um, but for him, um, it did... Um, it was an important exhibition and it, and it allowed him to think about the history of painting at this moment and the relationship between the United States and France and that issue. Um, so he said later in the, um, in the essay, of even greater relevance is the influence of the Impressionists and the Cubists. Their discoveries and accomplishments are felt by most of the younger American artists as a constant source of inspiration in their individual explorations and an aesthetic commission to carry these explorations as far as their abilities and artistic purposes require. What else, um, uh, so another reason why this was an important um, exhibition was that he began to create and develop a network of curators and, and gallerists in France. Um, and this would be particularly useful um, as he goes on to curate the Jackson Pollock Memorial retrospective in 1958 um, and the New American Painting. But he importantly also got some help from home so I just want to read out, as I conclude, I just want to read out the, an anecdote from his correspondence with Ashbury on helping him uh, <coughs> like, curate and, and assemble um, the Jackson Pollock show. Um, and really, I feel like one of the big pieces of scholarship we need to happen, or collecting, mm -hmm. needs to happen is O'Hara's letters, which um, are so brilliant. So this is O'Hara writing to Ashbury in Paris. <coughs> Holiday greetings to you and Pierre, and listen, there is a possibility that I'll be winging my way St. Germanward in the near future to unpack and install the new American painting um, at the Musée d'Art Moderne. What do you think of that? I can't seem to get anything definite out of Porter, but he's going to, and it would have to be quite soon since the show will open on January 13th. Now, don't tell me you'll be in Rome then. How often do I get to Paris after all? And besides, Paris without you would be like a performance of Manon without a soprano. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll let you know when I'm arriving, when I know if this all goes through. Nobody else is able to, so I imagine it will. And with my French, it should be a kinch. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. you like to come down to the sequestered halls of the museum and help out with the distribution of the Gottliebs? So, O'Hara, one week later, um, just before he flies to France, he says a rather more frightened um, telegram, arrive, Paris, morning, January 1st, please, cable whether you can, whether you plan return and could help me on shows, best O'Hara, so we assume Ashley didn't get back to it. <laughs> but he did, he did actually help him in the end, so uh, he became trusted assistant to O'Hara on the ground and supported with the install and with the organisation of the cocktail party, um, which I'm sure we'll, yeah, we'll be feeling later as well as supporting as a translator for negotiations with French officials. Um, in February 1959, when the new American painting um, needed to be disassembled, packed and shipped uh, to London, the Tate Gallery, James Schuyler also was brought in, um, and he asked Ashbury um, to work on us um, for one more day and help supervise the deinstallation. And Ashbury then becomes um, uh, sort of leading on with the reception history of this particular exhibition. Um, I'm going to probably just call it there um, for, for now, but we can maybe develop some of this um, as we continue. But thanks so much.